So my parents were always very um, interested in music. There was always music playing and my family in general. There's no professional musicians, but they have a strong affinity with music always. And when my sister and me were really young, we, the, my mother would take me and her to uh, the Concertgebouw in the Doelen in Rotterdam, um, where I grew up. Um, I think from when I was three or four years old, we would go to the coffee concerts that are maybe 20 to 30 minutes, so it's doable for a small child. And uh, this way I got introduced to the harp. Uh, and the first thing that spoke to me was the sound. And then I, don't, I was so attracted by the sound that I just had to play it. So from that moment, I started begging my mom to take me to music school so I could get lessons because I want to play the harp. And she said, no, you're too small. You're too small. You don't have, your arms are too short. You, you can't play. It's, uh, it's no question you can't play. And then after a, for a few years of uh, asking, 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 she said, okay, when I was six, she said, let's go to the music school. And the teacher will tell you you're too small. But I had such an instant connection with the instrument that the teacher said, okay, she's too small, but I want to keep her. <laughs> so I started when I was six. And uh, soon enough, I, I was introduced to Erika Waardenburg, which is the professor in Amsterdam in Utrecht Conservatory. So I started the Young Talent School from a really young age. And then, yeah, I moved on with the with conservatory. And I finished my studies with Ernestine Stolp, who's uh, the professor in the De Hague Conservatory. And uh, I think I was really, really fortunate with the combination of the two teachers, because from Erika, I learned everything you need to know about good harp playing, like proper, proper technique, proper musical development and getting to know all the repertoire that is available to the harp, which is very limited because we don't have Brahms, we don't have Beethoven, no Mozart, so it's limited selection, but what is there, I learned how to play it. And then um, when I changed to Ernestine Stolp, it was uh, a, a great addition in the way of exploring what else you can do with the instrument. So you now know how to play it perfectly and I still played repertoire, but also started to take more experimental projects like contemporary music theater projects. And she really opened my eyes to what else you can do. <laughs> That's a good one. I will use that. <laughs> um, I, um, yeah, well, for me, what I, I like most about contemporary music is that it's new and it's open to interpretation. There's nobody yet who has already fixed ideas on how it should sound. So I think also people that listen to it are more uh, willing to ac accept what's coming. And um, they don't have to agree with you, but they can. I think they are a bit more open to um, what you're going to give them. They come without the preconceived idea of, oh, but I love this performance, or I know this piece, I've played the, it a million times before on a CD, and now I want to hear it in the concert exactly like the CD. And so there's freedom, and I like that there's a new sense of expression. It's not with the older ideas that I think back then they also didn't perform music like that. I think it's really from the 20th century a problem with the, or a result of the recording industry. That there's a fixed idea on how music should sound and uh, I'm getting lost in my words. But um, I think, I, so the first piece I think maybe it was 10 years ago when no, maybe, maybe it, it got mixed a bit. I, I played contemporary music always a little bit because I always was attracted to having more expressive sound, not only beautiful sound. It fits me also. I, I think I have big hands. I have a loud sound and it always suited me better. Also the technique I like. And um, then 
I joined a collective uh, where they make experimental contemporary music theater and we wrote pieces together. So there was a composer, um, text writer, uh, performers like me and um, we would create it, start creating it together and there was always new music and we would learn everything by heart because it would be on location and it would be just really uh, uncomfortable to also have sheet music because we would have to get up and do a choreography or climb in the mountain or yeah, crazy things and uh, it's it really always connected. It was easy for me to learn those things by heart because I, I feel it's on a different level for me that I can really understand it. I chose the Berio because for me it's really a clear vision for a harp that I, I completely agree with and I think we should go from there. It's a starting point and I also think that the pieces, so I have Berio Sequenza on the album, um, Isang Yun in Balance, a Cage in a Landscape, a new piece by Dutch composer Van Rossum called Apple on the Sideboard and uh, Takamitsu Stanza and sometimes I feel like there hasn't been such an exceptional work like Birio so he really set the new bar but there hasn't yet come so a piece that also completely changed everything so I think for me it was fun to record the pieces that contributed to this and created a new sound image of the of the harp and I'm curious to see what will come next so this is just the first album and it's called In a Landscape uh, after the, pa uh, the piece of John C uh, Cage um, because I was thinking of what should you you know what do you call a CD or a project and um, I like the title a lot because it leaves so much room to how you experience it. In a landscape it can be literally a landscape, but it can be anything you imagine, I think. It's very free and open to interpretation, which I think is important. So maybe it's green, maybe it's pink, maybe, maybe it's not anything, maybe it's in the sky, maybe it's in the forest, who knows. But it's your place to go listen to, mu to this music and, and, and have your own thoughts about it. <laughs> I didn't think about this much, but I, I'm not against streaming at all. Because, yeah, I think there's two ways to look at it. Of course, the discussion is very uh, understandable. I understand the people that say no. I created art and it's, it has a value. And this way it doesn't get the value that it deserves. So I understand that team but I also feel that it's the it's a luxury to be able to have everything available and to reach audience that you maybe otherwise never would be able to reach um, I'm not against streaming I think the downside or the the only not the only but one of the negative things is of course that the, it's always not the right person getting paid and uh, someone was really smart by setting this up. But at the same time, we get to enjoy a platform um, that also helps spread your music. So, I don't know, it's uh, up or down. <laughs> I, I think uh, I would be happy to have my CD on streaming sites because I like to share music. I don't, it's not just for me and I don't um, need people to uh, go in a, or to make too much effort. I like it that it's available. It's, it's for music. It's for people. Music is for people. So otherwise it doesn't exist.